Hello everyone and welcome to the Great Maine Bird Quest. All right, I am back. It's been a pretty busy month, uh, month and a half, however long it's been since the last video. I've been helping out, teaching some workshops, um, doing a little bit of visiting family and stuff, and also I had no lens for a little while, but luckily that lens is back, which makes me very happy, and I've definitely been putting it to good use. And we are up to 151 species now. So we've passed the halfway mark. Unfortunately, fall migration is already starting. So unless I get really lucky in the next month or so, I'm not sure I'm gonna get all 300 because a lot of the ones that I still have left are summer residents. And some are probably already leaving the state on their way south. So unfortunately, I didn't get to do nearly as much traveling around, especially to different regions of Maine this year as I had hoped. Um, I got to do a few trips, but definitely not enough to get some of those birds that are only in southern or western Maine. However, we still have some time, so I'm definitely going to give it my best shot and see how many I can get before it's just me and the chickadees again. So even though I have been pretty busy over the past month and a half, I have been able to do a couple of pretty cool trips which got me some pretty cool birds. The first one was actually part of a workshop I was helping to lead, um, and part of that was going to a really awesome place in Maine called Machias Seal Island. And that is home to a really awesome puffin colony. So even though I wasn't able to film an act like a full episode, um, because I was working, obviously. I did get some pretty cool clips, so check out the experience from Machaya Seal Island. Machaya Seal Island is a tiny island about 10 miles off the coast of far eastern Maine. The journey begins with a boat ride across the open ocean at the mouth of the Bay of Fundy in the Atlantic Ocean. After about 45 minutes, we finally approached the island and got our first glimpses of the puffins and other birds flying around. There is no dock on the island, so getting onto the island requires a small boat ride to a very slippery ramp. The island is actually disputed territory between the United States and Canada, but luckily for my bird quest, it still counts as Maine. The Canadians are the ones that actually staff it and have a year-round lighthouse keeper and a biology team in the summer. After a brief wait, we're led to these bird blinds, where we'll spend the next couple hours peering out of these tiny holes, watching puffins as they fly by, land on the rocks, and generally look adorable. Normally, these rocks are covered in puffins, razorbills, and murres, but we had two things working against us on this particular day. For one thing, the breeding season seemed to have gotten off to a very early start this year, so most of the razorbills and murres had already left the island with their chicks to head back out to the open sea. Also, it was a much warmer day than normal, so most of the birds that were here soon flew off to the ocean for a nice cool dip in the water. There were still a few puffins left though, and they put on a pretty good show. Puffins have short stubby wings which they use to sort of fly underwater as they hunt for fish. Male and female puffins are pretty much impossible to tell apart. Puffins will generally mate for life and will return year after year to the same burrow that they have excavated beneath the rocks. 
Once their courtship is complete, they will lay one egg at the far end of this burrow and incubate it for about a month and a half. Once the chick hatches, it will stay inside the burrow for another month or so, being fed fish by its parents. Unfortunately, puffin chicks, which are also called pufflings, are rarely seen. Once they are ready to leave the nest, they do so under the cover of darkness and immediately head out to the open sea. They will stay there for the next three to six years or so, at which point they will finally return to the island to breed. Puffins can also be found in Canada, Scotland, Norway, Greenland, and especially Iceland, where about half of their breeding population can be found. No matter where you find them, though, they're always a very entertaining bird to just sit back and watch. Unfortunately, before we knew it, our time in the blinds was over and it was time to head back to the boat. We were lucky to have some incredibly calm seas, which made taking pictures of flying puffins from the boat much easier. On the way back to the mainland, we also stopped by an even smaller island where seals like to rest on the rocks and soak up the sun's warmth. I always really enjoy going out to Machaya Seal Island. It's a super cool place and it always makes me really wish I had a boat so I could just explore the main coastline and even do some uh, cruises out to the ocean to get more of those ocean birds. But hmm, someday. <laughs> I also made a little stop at one of the spots in southern Maine I went to back in the spring on my way back from visiting some family. So I turned that into a little bit of a trip, got some uh, nice southern birds, got some slightly better pictures of some of the ones I photographed before, and also did pick up a few new ones. So again, that place is kind of crowded, so I really, I have vlogger fright, so I don't like walking around with my video setup and all that. So I did use my little uh, portable camera, I guess, to get some 
scenics of the area there, but let's check out some of those views. I've also had some luck with some coastal birds up here, kind of closer to where I live. Um, I've gotten a common tern, which I was actually expecting to get on Machaya Seal Island, but like I said, the breeding season for a lot of those birds ended really early this year, so they were all gone by the time I got there. But luckily, I saw a few of them flying around closer to my house. Um, I got a, what I'm pretty sure is a least sandpiper. Um, a Bonaparte's gull, which I think they're one of my favorite gulls. I really just like the look of them, especially going into their winter plumage. I think it just looks pretty cool. Um, and then also, I've been working on getting a northern gannet picture, because I've seen a bunch of them, but a lot of times it's too far off, and they're just really small in frame, so it's not a very good picture. But luckily, I think they kind of hang out here most of the year, so hopefully I'll get lucky if I keep trying enough times. <laughs> I've also been having some pretty good luck just in my own backyard. There's been some pretty big flocks of birds forming up now that the fall migration is getting started, and I'm I've been able to work on getting some better pictures of some of the birds, and I've also picked up a couple of new ones in there. So, of course, there's black-capped chickadees because they like to be friends with everybody, so they're in every kind of flock. But there's also been black and white warblers, northern perulas, um, chestnut-sided warblers. Uh, what else has there been? I think I got a Tennessee warbler in there, which was pretty cool. Uh, the only annoying thing is a lot of the warblers are starting to get their uh, non-breeding plumage. So it's been 
pretty tough for me to figure out some of the IDs. So, in the hopefully unlikely event I do get one wrong, leave it in the comments and uh, I'll make a note of that in the description below. But hopefully I don't have to do that. <laughs> I was also lucky enough to find a great horned owl, which I was especially excited about because even though I've seen a few of them over the years, it's always been at night or some other time when I just haven't been able to get a good picture or any picture at all. So this is the first time I've really been able to get a recognizable picture. And even though it was pretty noisy because it was pretty dark, I'm still really excited to finally have a decent shot of a great horned owl. I also got some clips of the owl, so check those out because it's pretty cool to see. Well, I think that is about it for this video. Um, I've got a couple trips planned in the next few weeks. I'm gonna be heading up to the, the north woods of Maine, hoping to catch some of those more northern species um, and hopefully catch a few more birds before they migrate out. I'm definitely gonna be trying to catch as many birds as I can before they all leave the state as well. So fingers crossed I can add a bunch more to the list before it gets cold. Um, and yeah, then once the winter hits, I'll just be working on getting the last few that I wasn't able to get last winter and just generally improving all those pictures. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.